But I just sit and stare while you fade left. Fade. Hello and welcome to the video on the method of cylindrical shells. Okay, so sometimes uh, the method of cylindrical shells, also more commonly known as the shell method, is more convenient for when we want to uh, compute. So the shell method is sometimes more convenient when we want to compute uh, integral or compute a volume of a, ro of a rotating region when uh, a certain interval doesn't match the uh, axis of rotation. So when your when uh, your interval, so let's say your x interval or something or your y interval uh, doesn't match doesn't match your axis of rotation like the normal the traditional way that we have been learning uh, axis of rotation. Okay, so in this sense, I mean, uh, let's say we have something like this, x and y, and then our, our function is like this, okay? So it would be easy, so here's our interval from a to b. We want to rotate this region, but not around the x-axis, but around the y-axis, okay? So when we do that, then uh, here's our, our radius, right? But here we see how it changes, right? So here it is, the function, like f of x or whatever but then it changes to being something different. So this is this is where the troubles come in. Okay, so here there's a disparity between our interval and the axis of rotation the way we've normally been doing it. So here is uh, how to do, here's the derivation between, or be, between, uh, behind a shell method, okay? So let's look at a cylinder just in, in general. So here's a cylindrical shell. Let's say it's like this, okay? So it has like a, a width to it. Okay, so something like this, all right? And I'll just draw dots for the inside. Okay, so something like that. And when we have something on the inside like this. Okay, so here's a cylindrical shell. Uh, and here's the inside radius, so we'll call that little r. Okay, and then our outside radius the, to the all the way to the outside, that's our capital R, okay? And then so therefore, uh, oh, and here's our height, right? And then the distance in between, the width of that, in between our r and little r, big r and little r, is equal to the change in R, so delta R, okay? So the volume of the cylindrical shell is basically the volume of the in, of the uh, outer cylinder, so that would be pi capital R squared H, and then subtracting, we're going to remove that inner cylinder, so that means subtracting uh, pi little r ti r squared times H. So we can factor out uh, the pi and the H, so then we get capital R squared minus little r squared, and now we can uh, factor that out further into capital R plus little r, and then capital R minus little r, okay? So we do know that this is equal to delta r, so we can write pi times h times r plus r, and then times delta r. And finally, um, if we get that uh, the shell is very thin, that means that our the, the radii, the two radii, are almost similar, okay? So we're going to say that r is almost equal to little r. Okay, so then our, our volume, our complete volume this is, so th all of this is volume, 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 volume of the cylindrical shell, that's going to be pi times h times uh, a 2 times r delta r. Okay, so I'll rewrite this on the next slide and we'll continue from there. So we have volume of the cylindrical shell uh, is equal to a pi, or a 2 pi, that is, and then uh, times radius, times height, times delta r. So in other words, uh, in actual words, we have 2 pi times the radius, okay, and then uh, times the height of our cylindrical shell, whatever that is, and then times the thickness, basically, thickness uh, of r, all right, so thickness of shell. Okay, so uh, in a sense, what we're going to be doing is constructing uh, these shells to measure the volume. So here's our x and here's our y. So let's say here's our the piece of graph that we want to uh, analyze the volume of and here's our a and here's b. Okay, so what we're gonna do is basically construct little cylinders okay and then we're gonna do another cylinder here for the next one for the next thickness okay and then another cylinder so we're basically going to be constructing these little like cylindrical shells around to compute the volume. And what we really want is for these cylinders, see, see how here I've used kind of large intervals. Um, what we want is the number of shells. So we want number of shells to approach uh, infinity. So that means that our, approxima our approximation gets closer and closer and like more and more accurate to the actual volume. Okay, so that's what we really want. So when things get closer to infinity, 
and especially when you're computing area or volume of things on an interval, it turns out that we're going to get some kind of definite integral, okay? So this is what we get, is that um, the solid obtained by rotating a region under, uh, under f of x, let's say, so under f of x over the interval a to b, about, let's say, about the y-axis, okay? About the y-axis. So this one's going to look like uh, what I've drawn previously, so x and y. And then let's say we have our f of x, so this is f of x, all right? And then this is what we want, so when we draw our cylinder, it's going to look something like this. It's going to touch here, touch the graph, and come straight down, okay? So it's going to look like this. It's going to have a radius of uh, r, which is just our x, right? So radius is x. Um, so if I write out our formula, um, we're going to have volume is equal to 2 pi times the integral from a to b. So let's say uh, a is here, a is here, and b is there, all right? So a and b, and then times radius, times our height, and this comes from the formula that I've derived on the last, on the previous slide, uh, times our thickness, thickness of the shell. Okay, so what we can do is replace the radius with... Um, our x, okay, because this is just the x value, the x value we're at, so this is 2 pi times the integral from a to b of x, the height of our shell, of our uh, cylinder here, is going to be whatever f of x is, so when we plug it into our function, and the thickness is basically going to be how much do you change, and these are going to be incremental, like tiny changes, so that gives us our dx, alright, so this basically is our formula uh, about for rotating about the y-axis, so this is going to be uh, in a more simple form, 2 pi times the integral from a to b of x times f of x, and then our dx. Okay, so this is for rotating about the y-axis when we have an interval on the x-axis. Okay, and conversely, uh, let's say we're rotating about the, the x-axis, okay? But we have, um, so rotating about the x-axis, but we have a y-interval. Rotating about x-axis, let's say we have c to d, which is a y-interval, okay? So this is going to look like the following. So we have our x and our y, right? And then let's say we have some function like that, uh, which is a uh, an f of y, which is a function of y. Here's our interval from c to d, okay? So we want this area here, but we want to rotate it about this axis instead, okay? So this is going to look like, uh, so our cylinders are going to look like, they're going to be kind of turned sideways, right? So something like that. So in this case, uh, when we have our v is equal to 2 pi times uh, on some interval of the radius times the height times the thickness times height of the shell times the thickness of the shell, then what we're going to have, we're going to replace radius with not with x anymore, but the radius is now how high we are. So that would be y. Okay, so v is equal to 2 pi. Uh, and then now instead of a and b, we have c to d because that's our new interval. And then radius is going to be y. The height is going to be, so the height of our cylinder is f of y, f of y. And our thickness is uh, little changes in the y direction, so that would be our dy, okay? So this is, again, this is when we're rotating about the x-axis and we have a y interval. So this is going to be v is equal to 2 pi times the integral from c to d of y times f of y dy, okay? All right, so now let's do an example of what we could uh, have. Okay, so we're supposed to find the volume of the solid obtained by rotating the region under this graph here uh, over 0, 1 about the y-axis. So this is uh, an x interval. Okay, so what we're going to need to do is use this formula here. So v is equal to 2 pi uh, times the x interval a to b of x times f of x and then our dx. Okay, so let's plug things in. So we basically just get uh, 2 pi from a to b, so that's 0 to 1. Then we just plug it in x here, and then we plug in our function. So that's a 1 minus 2x uh, squared, no, just a 2x, plus 3x squared minus 2x to the third, and then dx. Okay, so we're just going to keep going. So we get 2 pi times zero, uh, the integral from 0 to 1 of x minus 2x squared plus a 4, sorry, not a 4, but a 3x to the third minus a 2 x to the fourth dx. Okay, so let's continue this and we're just going to solve that integral. So we have v is equal to 2 pi times the integral from 0 to 1 of x minus 2x squared plus a 3x to, to the third uh, minus a 2x to the fourth dx. So let's integrate and we're going to get a 2x times 
1 half x squared minus a 2 over 3 x to the third plus 3 over 4 x to the fourth minus a 2 over 5 x to the fifth and this is all evaluated from 0 up to 1 okay so now this uh, this 0 that's just gonna all be zeros right so if we just plug that in we get v is equal to 2 pi times a 1 over 2 minus 2 over 3 plus 3 over 4 minus a 2 over 5 okay and then uh, let's see I think the, the least common denominator or one of the common denominators is just 60 so we're just gonna do 30 over 60 minus a 40 over 60 and then plus uh, something over 60 a 45 over 60 minus 24 over 60 so if we do that we're gonna get that V is then equal to 2 pi times 11 over 60 which is equal to a uh, 22 well this these can cancel so this is a 30 on the bottom so we get 11 pi over 30 all right so now that we've learned that uh, concept the, the general concept of a shell method what we're gonna do is tackle when we have two graphs okay so this is a two graph problem all right and what I mean by two graphs is let's say we have uh, something like this so an X and a Y right and now instead of only having this one like f of x now let's say we have a g of x as well okay so here's g of x and we're integrating let's say from a to b okay and we want to find the volume uh, of the solid when we rotate this region here so what I'm drawing outlining there we're, we're trying to rotate this around the y-axis so like that okay so trying to spin it around and here so again we see we, how we have an x interval right this is a b but we want to rotate it around another axis. So what we're going to have to do is use shell method, right? So our first, um, so what our height is going to be, well, our x is still going to be the same, right? So everything basically stays the same except for the height part. That was the thing that's changing here, right? So let's say we draw a cylinder, okay? So let's, let's draw a cylinder, okay? So it's basically going to look something like this, okay? So that's for the first one there. Uh, anyways, so this is a cylinder. It's a shell, cylindrical shell. This is a very like outside one, right? And then anyway, so this is the volume that we're trying to calculate. Anyways, so for uh, like I said, everything stays the same for our formula. So we have v is equal to two pi uh, times the integral from a to b. So our x interval a to b of x, except for okay. So this is the same. This is this represents our radius. But now, the only thing that's changing is our height. What are we supposed to put in for the height part? And then we have dx as well. So what is height? That is uh, the difference between, so again, I'll, I'll redraw that down here real quick. So x, y, here's f of x, here's g of x, f of x, and g of x, okay? So here's from a to b, and what we really want is this section in here. Okay, so what is the height of each one? It's going to be top minus bottom, okay? And we've seen this before, right? So our height is actually going to be f of x minus uh, g of x minus g of x okay so our new formula is now going to read v the volume is equal to 2 pi times the integral from a to b of x times f of x minus g of x in parentheses and then our dx okay so that's what happens when you have uh, two curves instead of one